who is a winner at Daytona tonight. Here we go. The Rams are coming up. The gate's ready to drop at Daytona. Who's going to get the whole shot advantage? Dungey holds off Tomac. Eli tries to come back to the inside. He's going to take the lead. Can he hang on? The Monster Energy Kawasaki. Able to close that gap down. His, his speed today has just been phenomenal. He is absolutely railing these corners. His corner speed's down oh, those no. mid centers. And his exit speed is just phenomenal. His entrance speed's phenomenal, too. Yeah. <laughs> Puzzling, too, because honestly, that those little dabs is on the gas, but Tomac on the gas, I guess, just that much harder. And they've stretched it already 12 seconds over. Still managed to pull the trigger and make a pass. It's starting to tighten up, and you can hear the fans again. Oh, the fans are going crazy. They've got air horns. They've got boo-boos. For the first time since 2013. And by the way, it was back in 2013 that these two guys were battling out and as youngsters. Yeah. yeah, the 250 division. Which Southwick National, Lucas Oil, Pro Moto Cross, the rough sand track at Southwick. Eli Tomac, number three. Monster Energy Kawasaki has caught your leader. Fram Mechanics area. Yes, the atmosphere down here is unbelievable right now. The Fram Mechanics area, uh, the, all the team members are going crazy. It's much friend in motocross because they don't have windshield wipers, so you can't clear it. So you have to use tear-offs. So the problem is, you use all your tear-offs and eventually you can't see. I don't know if there's room for Tomac to make it happen here, but he's certainly putting the heat on. Gonna switch to the left again. Everywhere rocks in the championship. Tomac, we know he's number three, but from the front, he just, <laughs> there's no number visible. On. Yeah, come on by. They're trying to stay out of the way, not sure which way to go. I think those guys are exhausted. Mike, fifth, Nicoletti, sixth. Watch this. Oh, big run around the outside. Whoa. Long way around for Tomac. He's, he's got the drive, and he's going to be the crowd out going crazy here in Southwick, Massachusetts. So Tomac able to take the lead. He's going to your insurance if you call Geico. If you want to call, though, I'd advise you to keep your eyes on the TV screen because this battle is great. Part of Southwick, we actually have a... Whoa, Tomac has gone down just like that, and Ken Roxon has taken the lead. Once again, Tomac to the inside, takes Whoa. the lead. Roxon squares it up. Roxon's going to try to beat him Ooh. in the exit. No, now allow Roxon to get it back, but only for a few corners. Tomac had a little something extra and was immediately able to respond. As much vision, yeah. Uh, where the tear off gives you the complete goggle clear. The roll up. Now Tomac's got a few more lap riders to get through. He does it. Eli Tomac wins the Red Bull Southwind Moto That's Two. It wasn't enough. Tomac is finally on the board with a victory boost in his face. Yeah. Now look at this. The outside. Wow. Look at Whoa. that speed from Tomac. That's typically. Tomac can kind of weather this storm. Stay close enough and maybe give him something late in the race. We saw that happen by that Monster Energy Kawasaki. Well, he's shown pace all day long from first to second practice, fastest qualifier. Didn't quite get it. Sometimes when Roxon's put under pressure, he's able to pick it up. But right now, the shot to keep Tomac hung on the outside. No, he, he didn't let him go. You know, you heard Tomac say off the first moto, the first 10, 15 minutes, I just couldn't get that rhythm. I wonder if Roxon's having the same problem. Yeah, this is kind of an old school way. Uh, I heard a lot in the old days of motocross. Who won and win the overall at Washougal? And he oh, used it to good effect as well. Takes Colton off wide. Crowd on their feet as Tomac. There's Guy set. That gap at the end of lap four was 3.024 seconds. Tomac was four tenths quicker. Tim Guy set than Eli Tomac. I mean, we've got a long way to go. 18 and a half minutes plus two laps to go. Since he's got there in second place, Geiser has skills coming into play now. Did it early on in the race. Okay, double, double. Oh, Geiser! Geiser made a mistake. Or has he got a problem? For the Colorado native. Tim Geiser, the new world champion, crosses the line six seconds behind him. Sudden, Tomac finds himself in fourth and third as he breezes past the number 12 of Max Nagel. He's got Tim Geiser second. Oh, he scrubs neatly past Geiser. Geiser, no reply, just looks across and looks as Lim says almost helplessly. Kai Rowley on lap nine here. We've seen Geiser throughout the season when he was going to, after the title to see. Four and five, Fevre six, Tonus seven, Searle is eight, Koldenoff is nine, Wilson ten.
in race one. He'll do his best to stay out there as long as possible. But look at Tomac switching it up. And uh, Kai Rowley just getting caught behind a back marker. Absolutely easy. Eli has done that with the best in the world. And he's just that strong late in the moto. 2.14, five seconds in a lap. I do think the world champion is showing his medal, however. Okay, slow getting up, Chuck. That's son. the breaking bumps that I was telling you about that sneak up and bite you late in the moto when you start. And Eli Tomac safely out of the final turn. He cruises to the checkered flag. really good as you come onto the start straight and then he's tripling out of the first turn we'll see if he can catch a line there boy going to the inside there it is boy the crowd knows what's coming too but cooper's not done oh he won it 3.4 seconds 3.5 behind dungeon oh, mistake on web it caught odds right here wheelie triple quad all the yes. way into the turn at the end, coming back the other way. This thing is closing up. The last few years, Tomac has been one of those riders with that capability and really for Tomac to get himself back into championship contention. There it is again. Here comes Eli. Where does he go for it? Be on the start straight. He flies through the woods. make a championship bid. You see Tomac, when he went through the start straight, he was going wide to line. But Tomac's quick to the corner. New leader. Here he is. Checker fog. And Eli Tomac goes back to back. All in. There's Mike Williamson right here. He's going to be fifth. It's a tight track here. Very demanding in so far this year. Oh, Millsaps makes a little mistake. Here comes Tomac. Two-time winner this year has the lead. Once Dungey has Here to go he with goes. him. Dungey coming after Davey. To start the season, then Tomac got an eighth at round three, and you're like, what's going on with Tomac? Five lines, five ruts coming down that turn. Lots of ruts in the takeoff to these jumps. Here comes Dungey. Down here in Minneapolis. Checkered flag and Eli Tomac wins. He was a half a second quicker than anyone else on the track. Dominating performance. It's all about where do you set that pass up. He's going to have to get aggressive here. Well, then it's really start to change for you. Tomac, of course, he's going to pour it on right now. He's here tired. He comes. Of, he's up right here. Check it out. See Inside. Ya. Come on. No, says Martin. I'm oh. not done. Just as quick on the throttle. Oh, there it is. Team are going to be very proud and pleased with his performance. Oh, yeah. He's time winner, and he does it back to back at Daytona. Eli Tomac is your winner. To get right into the mix, he's fourth of the point standings. Who scans the saps? Tomac clears Dungy. Here comes Marvin. Started off pretty aggressive in this main event. There goes Tomac and the crowd on their feet here in the back side of Baggin now. Here he comes leaping to the inside and the reigning champ moves into second. Now he's going to check up a little bit, go to the outside, but just like he was doing in the heat race, he really has the ability to turn down and make tonight with Tomac getting the win. He will bite into Dungy's points lead once again and take three more away. Don't forget it's 20 minutes and a lap here tonight. You don't become it for the main events. And we really saw, like what I'm seeing out of the champ. We saw that fight out of Dungey last week. At All of a sudden, they found their way back to the lead. At this time of year, this is when, right, the cream right. These two riders have the speed. Fitness is not a question. And they're both riding on factory teams. The KTM, this is great experience for him. He's got two podiums in his career. Right now, round two in San Diego, then at eight at the second round, uh, uh, race three, round three in Anaheim. With this win in Indianapolis, Eli Tomac wins three in a row and chips. Monster.
Monster Energy Supercross Championship. Second hole shot of the year for Bogle. And here's Tomac. Already up to 10th. Had a terrible start. 17th at Daytona, 19th at Seattle, and he worked his way all the way up to fourth on both of them. So quick oh. that we're pretty sure we're gonna have a lot of laps. Make a huge difference for Tomac. We're thinking 27, 28 laps. It's off of the lead, I'm sorry, Tomac. 9.7 seconds off of the lead. Now he makes the move on Brayton. He's gonna have a little bit of- He'll get another one. Here he comes inside, got it. Gets around Dixling the number four. Look Here at goes this Tomac. Tomac inside of Reed. There's wow. another point. And quickly he'll have baggage in a ton of time. Just inside of 14 minutes Whoa. of one lap. Bogle with the issues. He goes down. And Tomac gets. Here's he goes oh, for a there pass. He goes. And now no team orders necessary. Tomac just. And now he'll try to see if he can catch Jason Anderson. Oh, man. <laughs> what he a championship. Here we go. Here's Tomac. In he goes. Oh, it's still tripled out of that turn. Did the crowd back there, you'd be kidding yourself. He knows exactly what's going on right now. He's and this kind of mimics what we've seen for two months. Ryan Dungey riding protective of his points lead. He's just doing everything he can do, and it's paying off. He's made the passes that he's needed to get into second, and now he's got Dungey and his men are going to be integral here in how this fight plays out tonight because they need to encourage their riders. Oh, they were part to bar, and Dungey knows his title rival is right on him. There it is. Tomac's there! But he oh. makes a mistake, and Dungey comes back. Right. Takes him wide, slows him down. Tomac's such smart riding, Ralph. He knew that Dungey had the opportunity. Tomac again! That's been oh, his spot. He slows him down, takes the inside away. Tomac moves in front of Dungey in the points by the same amount. That's on his number. It's Eli Tomac who lights the candles in Salt Lake and takes a three-point lead. Stalking his biggest prey and doing it with blazing speed. One more time. One more gate drop. Vegas. Chip fight is on. Tomac's trying to hustle to third. Dungey to second. He's got Baggett. And the crowd come to their feet here at Sam Boyd Stadium. That both of these riders in crunch time here have found their way into first Dungeon Tomac here over the next 18 minutes plus a lap. Remember, third, back and forth. Here's Tomac. He's got the lead. Fourth or better is what Dungey has got to be here. Well, Dungey, he hears the Kawasaki rider. Look what happens. Anderson on that rock star Husqvarna. He's awful hungry. Dungy. Tomac's only ally is his teammate Josh Grant, who's now made his way. In. Oh, they pushed each other many times, and Dungy's inside, fighting for second as we want McGrath, Stewart, Reed, and Carmichael, all of whom went on to win the championship that year. He could be the only one out of the six Supercross championships. Well, and Ralph, one week ago, we were in the same position. And Eli, energy of the crowd, cheering you on. We're hunters and the hunted. And I just think that Ryan's finding his groove, finding where Eli is better and makes the spot. One, one thing that's happening here, Jeff, with these two battling, everybody else is closing in. That could help Tomac here, because he needs people to get a Oh, he misses the quad. Oh, there goes Dungey around the outside does in his spare time and his prey that he's stalking now is the nuts. One lap left in the season. Tomac's into Dungy. Dungy's off track. It's Grant. Did he get on smoothly, Jeff? Was that the right spot for him it to was. get on? That was the same okay. place into the track. This is going to be incredible to the end as Grant gets around back in now. But he wants Dungy to ride with a little bit more there. He is telling him what happens there. And Ralph, this ride that oh, back, back, back is out. He's out. Okay, in any way, shape, or form is Anderson. Here's Dungey. Listen to the crowd. Oh, man. That could have been just, just the type of luck that Dungey needed because runs. And even further back will be Anderson. Wilson now in fifth and Reed in sixth. Watch Lindsay. Watch the so white flag is out. Watch right here. Dungey's going to go to the left side. It's six between the two. And there goes Dungey. There's the exclamation point one way or the other. Tomac comes back. Reed goes by. Where's the rest? Grant will move. Shackard 
five for Anderson. Grant is third. Dungy is fourth. Like Jason, whether you, you choose the outside if someone runs wide and basically block passes you, it can cost you some ground. There is Tomax. <laughs> Those lines funnel together. So at some point, someone's got to play chicken and, and back out. Oh, and then Vogel just like that. Just trying to not stall the bike or tip over in the corner. And that goes to work on Wilson again. <laughs> oh, almost off the track. Wow, that's a new line. Tomax going, gee, he just did that. I won the first one. Let me give it a shot. Let me go around the outside. Oh. Side. Ooh, Wilson doing close. a great job. Wilson knew exactly where he wanted to go. Oh, this is a great racing. Wilson looks over his shoulder. Right. Will, Wilson, keep it tight. Tomac to the inside. Keeps it tight. Wilson runs wide. Whoa. What a line from Tomac. It easy on his teammate. Tomac's going to have to earn this uh, pass. He made it easy there. Oh, I can tell that was a bad move. <laughs> Sorry think, about that. I think he is closing massively now. That mistake in the uphill definitely hurt. And suddenly, Tomac is there. Well, that did not take long. Before, Tomac's had some pretty incredible rides out here. So I think he's built himself quite the fan base. A lot of people want to see him do well, as well as other riders. Tomac down uh -oh. the inside. This could be it. Tomac's got the line, but Moose Gam's on the inside of this next corner. He'll try to stand him up, and he does. Moose is on the outside. Tomac has the line. Oh, no. and Moose Gam leaves the brakes. Wow. Good job. And look at this. Tomac comes right back. Yeah, that's right. On their feet, uh, just like we are at the moment. What's going to happen? They're going to cross over lines. Watch. Tomac will try and square it up. That you really didn't want behind you is breathing down your neck. Look at Tomac. Different line. Sticks his wheel in there. The crowd is up on their feet. Okay, Tomac's got that same line again. And Can Moose Gang stay on the inside like he did the last time? Now Tomac's going to square it. Oh, a little bit of contact. I think has the deal done. Uh, that he got a little aggressive there. Now he oh, tries it again. He brought him all the way up the wall. Moose Gang comes back. Technically, Marvin would have the number one or the red background. But look at this. Tomac. Outside line. Oh. Unbelievable. Now Marvin, is he going to just try to use it? He's doing just that. Roger DeCosta and the rest of the team must be smiling with at least the effort and the fight he's put in and the crowd throwing it sideways. Outside oh. line for Tomac here. Can he run it? Ruskin's going to grease the inside. Oh, oh. yes, Tomac did it. Ruskin over and over and hats off to Muscat. Uh -huh. Made a great race out of this. Just kept fighting, kept fighting. Everyone wondering who will take over in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Eli Tomac takes over. And Tomac's going after Baggins. Tomac going to try to make the pass. Oh, this is awesome. Moosecat made a little mistake. They went to the outside, but didn't cut them. He got Vogel back there. Challenge you. Nice line by Tomac <laughs> to make the pass. Let's see what happens in this left-hander. He's leaving the brakes late. Makes uh, Craig go to the outside. So Tomac now looking very racist. So hungry. Tomac's got that uh, eye of the tiger kind of look going on now. And when he's got that going... Theoretically opening up the turn a little bit. And jumping down that hill is Tomac. Oh, he is putting so much pressure on. He is fast through there. Tomac trying to figure out a way around Muscat. Outside to inside here. Muscat gets back to the right side to cover it. It is wide, and especially in a lot of areas, and you can utilize it. If you go far enough off the main line, and if you head out to Siberia or something, you will find <laughs> some smooth tracks. And uh, Georgia, can you add on that? Well, we were talking about the track conditions, and there's a lot more sand within the dirt than normal. Oh, here sorry, George, to cut you off. Tomac takes the lead. He gets what did he do? Together. He, he put his hand down like he was reaching down for something. I don't know if there was maybe just a yep. loud and wild, and that's going to pump any rider up. One lap to go. Is they're going to make this right hand or the white flags out? Well, the fans are red butt coming alive. This is the battle everyone wanted to see all year long. Tomac. Same way, he's. Basically, power sliding out of every yes. single one of these corners. Almost maybe a little too aggressive on the gas. Yeah, they're both probably not subscribing to that go slower to go faster. And he's going to go back to the outside of this downhill. Tomac trying to manage it. And so far, so good for the Monster Palace. Tomac weathering the storm. you got to think right now, if Tomac doesn't make a mistake, he's got this in hand. The fans are going. You can hear the air horns. The inside lines. Baggett switching, getting closer, but not close enough. Tomac hits the lead. He had to do that on the last lap. That was crucial. Here it is at Redbud. And Baggett gave it a run right down there to the end. In Daytona, temperatures in the 80s under bright sunny skies.
full moon here tonight. The warm moon the was warm out. Moon. And now we're ready. The 450 main event is set to go. The 32nd board is up. Round 10 of Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship about to drop the gate and one of the world's most historic, famous, and legendary racing venues. Here we go. You can hear the crowd up on their feet getting excited. Here come the Ravs. Get ready to drop the gate at Daytona. Oh, one rider goes down. Moose Cat, who jumped through the gate, got hung up behind him. Martin's out front. Tomac is in second. Here comes Brayton along in third. You got to wonder how deep is Dungey. I haven't spotted him yet. Yeah, he's way back he's there. I way spotted back. him. He got uh, hung up in the gate. And Tomac is trying to bust his way past Martin and check out on the field. Boy, what a debut for Martin on yeah. this factory Honda. Well, and this is going to make life easy on himself. He gets a little, goes a little long on that triple there. Probably not used to the horsepower of the 450 Honda as he rides a 250 most of the time. But he is really good in these conditions. So he's done himself a favor by getting out front here. Should have a clear track. Okay, this is the position you want to be in. This is what you're been to his gloves and another strip to the handlebars. He's velcroed himself to the bike. Here Whoa. is Eli Tomac on the three, on the charge, and he quickly displaces a great place to one make a pass, but it's also a, a, a place for riders to gain or lose time. Bogle not getting through there as well as he it makes a big difference, especially when the guy you're trying to beat for a championship is right in front of you. So for Tomac, getting around back, it, it's not just three points, it's actually Moose Gany. Martin Davalos and Matt Bashali around out the top 10. Tomac, now yeah. you said he can see Bag and he's going for it. Yeah, he radar of his will set on you. It locks and loads, and then you Whoa. see a little mistake there from Baggett, which lost him about five or so bike lanes. Very, very good at just keeping that momentum up. And that's usually when he's on fire. Oh, we yeah. have keys to the moto, and we had a uh, last year's 450 check just like you usually do, and it appears in this moto, Tomac is doing it. Exactly, and then the other thing which he needs right now, finding a passing area, that's very important. So Tomac has the moto to go. See him pulling a tear off there. He doesn't want to be doing that lap off the lap, turn off the turn, watch us to the outside, rails that. Baggett did that earlier, that's how oh, there. Tomac Ooh. just going from the left to the right. Baggett probably hearing that Kawasaki all over it behind him because you can hear Adi Perico back to the outside. Oh, Vogel in third is still not too far back. He's, He's keeping right him in sight. Absolutely. Tomac's going to try it again. Nowhere to go on that downhill. Past the mechanics area here. That one sideboard. Oh, Whoa, Tomac, what a move from the outside to the inside. He takes over the lead. Tomac has come back to life here at Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. But you definitely want to keep one eye on the TV screen here because this championship and this weekend first time in his career this was much needed this moto victory yeah it's funny to say that a rider has won so much it's about how to lock down a championship and he's just taking a huge step toward it here Eli Tomac wins the second moto Seeley is buried in the pack here the whole shot. Here's Tomac right there in that green Kawasaki. And the number three is in second. He looks awful racy. Tomac oh. to the front. Down goes Freezy. Freezy loses it. Tomac goes by. Brayton's right. Something that can give him that advantage because he doesn't need much. Oh, he makes a little mistake. Oh. Yes, oh, he the, did. The whole crowd here at Angel Stadium. That you worry about going on a massive win streak. After what he did last year with nine wins, he can do it again this year. No, Daniel like Tomac just makes a huge statement as he owned of the Triple Crown. There it is. Tomac with a tremendous start, but not as good as Barsha. Tomac to the inside. Yes. Yep. Anderson, however, got a good one. He's up in the top five. 
Tomac also had the whole shot at the season opener. The mechanics work hard, right? They're, they're part of this team. They, they want that win as bad as the rider. The only problem is they, they don't rider it. Certainly, uh, that's what's going down for Tomac right now. And the crowd's starting to get into it. We're on the final lap, and it's with a half a lap to go. Yeah, he is definitely right on his tail, just a second and a half behind him. One since Seattle in April 2013, and he wants another one. It's a win in the Arizona desert, and he has it. Eli Tomac, his 15th career win. Tomac's there first. Anderson on his heels. Who scans right in there in fourth, Pike fifth. Tap, tap, tap all the way through. That was just perfection out of your points there. Monster Energy Kawasaki's Eli working his way around on this final lap. And here he comes. And the checkered flag waits at the top of the hill as Eli Tomac takes the win. Right, France. Looking for the whole shot. Cooper Webb trying to come around the outside. Tomac on the inside. Of scan and Hill both came firing in there, or er, yeah, Muscan. It's leader Jason Anderson showing timing and scoring. He has him at six. Oh, here goes Tomac. Tomac on the count. He got a great run into the sand section. Rick Mack loses the lead as a French rider Muscan pulls past, and here comes Hill. Watch Hill's Hill score. Hill trying to be in position to be only the sixth rider in history to win his first premier class start. Is he? Here's Hill. Different line through. Oh, there it is! Oh, cheers him all the way through the sand as Tomac asserts himself and pushes to the front of the field. Going for win number four on the year. Whoa. And Muscan back in front! No way! Here's Tomac again. And Muscan gave him a lot of room right there. 13th. Since the start of 2017, 17th of his career in 71 starts. Since 1999, and Eli Tomac comes back to Tampa. And will go to the oh, Anderson with a good start, but not as good as Tomac. Tomac Anderson trying to get inside of him. No, Anderson with a mistake. Tomac trying to check out. And behind them come a pair of KTMs. Normal thing. Gave him a little bump there, and Chad Reed. Got the short end of the stick on that. Have been the podium twice this year at Tampa, or it was Tomac, Muskin, and Anderson, and then at Atlanta, and he's gained a couple if he can hang on for the win with Anderson running in second, but he could be the points leader. Crowd on their feet here in St. Louis, enjoying the performance of one of the biggest stars of the sport, the rider in green on the green Kawasaki, lights the candles and celebrates another victory. Muskan on the inside. Anderson trying to push past. Followed by Tomac right there in third. Tomac third in the championship. Oh, and down he goes oh. off the bike. And he gets right back into this. Go. Oh, and Anderson's down. And he's oh. struggling to get the bike picked up. There goes Tomac. Look there from Spider Cam. But just a, oh, oh, boy. Oh. Stay under that mud. You see the huge puddles there. Boy, that got the... Here's Eli Tomac going for his 19th career win. He will tie Damon Bradshaw for 10th most all-time. Just amazing. Eli Tomac has survived Seattle to win in the Emerald City. The critical hole shot. Stacking up on the inside. Leads him here on the 32. Looks like Muscan. I, I, I thought Tomac was in there. It, did Anderson? No, Anderson leads the points. Oh, Tomac! Oh, no. no! Craig goes down. Craig crashes out. And here comes Tomac right after him. Oh, boy. The fight is on for the win here now. Group. Oh, and Cunningham cases the triple. And Muscan narrowly misses him. This afternoon. Oh, here Tomac goes. on the rear wheel. New leader in Foxborough. Can Muscan get it back? He's won seven races so far this year. Can he make it eight here this afternoon? 
white flag. Watch me scan on the outside. Can he get a drive? Not close enough. Cannot do is slip up and make a mistake. Oh, Moosecan goes right into him. Takes him to the ground. Not happy at all. Gives him a thumbs up and then has more issues and can't get the bike up. Get victory number three here in Foxborough. gonna get the whole shot. Anderson back in eight. That's where it oh, starts. Hey. Muskan coming after Tomac. He's got a win here tonight on that Red Bull KTM. This lap at a 101. Only Tomac and Muskan are sub. You go out Monster Alley and all the way around there. It feels like just, you know, being hit with a shotgun. So fired up right now and so determined. Tomac had pulled away. Marvin has reeled him right back in. Look sure, look yes. At, that. at the finish, it was one second. Now it's 1.3 seconds just in one turn. So can Not many others can match. And Anderson, in so many categories, he leads the way. Best average finish, padding his heel now. Eli Tomac takes the win. And we are back. And so is Eli Tomac, and Jason Anderson knows it. As we went to break, Anderson's lead, basically with four laps to go, started putting together a furious charge. And now Anderson is going to have to respond. There's only a lap. And now clearly Anderson is aware of it. Anderson is completely aware. You saw him look over the shoulder. He knows Tomac is coming. Anderson. Tomac is right there. It's going to come down to the final lap, and the fans at Glenn Heller are being treated to a great one down the stretch. Coming like a freight train. Do not look over your shoulder, Jason Anderson. You just a mistake. Is that oh, a Tomac's mistake? right there. This is going to be it. A pass for the lead out of nowhere. Was that a mistake? Or was that, like that Husky just wasn't giving all the power? We do have a re Rocks in a good start out of the gate. Can he lead them out of the first turn? He does. Moto's kick there on the outside. Oh, mistake from Roxon. And that actually slows up Muscat, allows Tomac to pass the both and take over the lead in the number one. Inside. No. Ooh, that was close. Roxon's not giving up, but in fact, he still is able to make it happen. There was virtually no. He's for the 51, the, the blue Yamaha. He's got a little bit of pink on his gear. He likes that color. Marvin he moves on each other, and now Tomac with a good line of the downhill. Oh, oh and then Roxon off the racetrack. Gonna hand the lead back over. Can he hustle first time? Not able to pull the trigger on a pass. That's around the outside, a little bit too long of a distance. But that was the first time he was officially next to. Big decision maker as they jump downhill here. There's lines on the inside and outside of the bottom of the hill. They're absolutely rushing it into every turn now. As the clock is set to expire. Next time around, it'll be two laps to go. So Where will he make his attack? He actually is pretty good through this section here, yeah, but he's not close enough. You go see the car to the right side of your screen. Now the left side is we switch the angle. So here it is. If Muscan has any lines picked out, give you this great battle. And they are essentially oh. matching. Oh, as Tomac was wide and Muscan almost had him. They're just going at it. They're tired. They're fatigued. There isn't a perfect line. There isn't a perfect Muscan situation. outside line. Got side by side with him. They're to the left, they're on the right to get the blue flag. Blue flag warns him that they're coming. Side by side, white flag is out. Muscat tries to use the outside. Muscat has not really made a mistake yet, but Muscat's good through here. He's really close this time. Okay, he's gonna try to jump down the rollers. They almost oh. come together. Rush out of the corner, momentarily the lead for Muscat. Tomek gets it back. They rot. The ruts come back together then. They're at the top. When they drop back down, Woo. this is where Muscat's been very fast on this straightaway. He's committed. He's got to go to the outside. Oh, can he so make the close. pass on the outside? Big downhill section here. Oh, it's so tempting to rush it. You can make a big mistake. Marvin Muskan flying down this hill. Big triple out. Tomac's going to hold it under extreme pressure. He wins the Red Bull High Point National. And he's got the Kawasaki leading everyone into the first turn. Can he hold it coming out? Looks like he's going to get edged by Ken Rocks a little bit wide. But what a great start there for, is that, was it Harrison? A long, sweeping, downhill corner. I thought Tomac might have had a line. No, Roxon shut it down. Tomac tries to settle in and figure out what to do with Roxon. It is allowing Barsha to get right in the fray. 
See that Yamaha with a big combination of jumps. Let's see how Roxas does it. Able to get all the way on top of that big table. Oh, Honda, right. Cowie, Yamaha, Suzuki, Husqvarna, and KTM. That is, as a fan of a couple of years ago, we didn't even have six brands competing, let alone six brands up front. So, yeah, it's Roxanne over Tomac. Hand is doing a good job. Still, hey, now Tomac looking for an opening. Going past the mechanics area. He took on more roost. Left. Tomac just shading a little further inside than Roxanne in each corner. They see shot with paintball, so. A lot of times you see riders that have bruises on their arms and places. Just he's forced early. Oh, nice line by Tomac and a little mistake by Roxon. It almost opened the door. Yeah. Haven't seen many passes there. Another shot. Out of you can see the stripe that he left behind. Can he square it up? This is what we've seen him try and do several times. But Roxon has the inside in this corner. So it'll square up the corner again. Watch. We've seen this happen. Yeah, a different line. He's going way wide there. So eventually you start getting like a little powdery firm that forms, but it gets further and further out. So you got to go out to get to it eventually. He tries to open it. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Oh, watch it. oh well, not this time. Tomac had that line the previous lap. Really hammered it this time. A lot of passes in that corner so far this weekend. But Tomac tried the previous lap and pulled good start this time. And this time he indeed does win it. Eli Tomac, first moto. It's almost like the 250 class. Different riders, different techniques, different brands. Right now, he's oh, got the flying. Wow. Moon scan. That's the same area where we went flying off the track yeah. last year with a huge crash. He's really good there. Now, Tomac, he's going to want to do the same thing. Get around Bosha quick. He's got the inside. I don't think Bosha even knew that. This is where Tomac has done a lot of damage, but it's also where Moon scan took the lead from Bosha earlier. Yes, yeah, somebody's bike just. Two wheel action here at the wing. Uh, they just got the two lap card, less than two laps to go. Oh, they are pushing. That section's gotten really treacherous in there. That was the fastest they've been through there in several laps. Their last Eli seems to be right there. Look at him so strong into some of these downhill, off camber tight turn. Great spectator section there. You can almost hear them echoing through the valley. Oh, Other side line for Tomac. Big charge. Just fun to watch. There's really not much to say except two masters of the game right now. Tomac doing everything right to try to find running room. And Tomac close. He is close. Yep. Muskan airing out the top of that jump, even at feet off. He's trying everything. Marvin keeps closing the door. Oh! Who's going to get the exit of the corner? Finally, Tomac is able to execute the pass. White flag out, as you mentioned, trying to get Tomac back. You might as well let it all hang out now. You got to give it everything you've got. This is a huge mental game. It's also a difference. It's a six-point swing. But uh, oh, oh, Marvin! Marvin is down. He hits the back of that jump. Little pin down there. Knows that Marvin went down, but he's got this. He does. Eli Tomac, a spectacular first moto win here at Southwick. One rider there did not start at all. And it looks like Baggett leading them into the first turn. He's freshly groomed. This is exactly where he wanted to be. Tomac in third behind Lucercio. Yeah, Tomac didn't actually have a, a, a great ride despite getting upset. Whoa. Tomac just attacking that downhill on this open lap. Okay, so Tomac up to second with Baggett in the lead. For other riders that may not normally be up there, but Tomac, he's oh in gosh. full attack mode on this <laughs> opening lap. Rhythm then sort of go from straight to oh, straight. Oh, Baggett! Flipping over the bars. Unforced error there. Back to work up front. Man, he just rides with so much intensity. Like right now, he... On that jump. Wait a minute. That was that Tomac. was Eli Tomac. That is Eli Tomac on the side of the track. Yeah. On the side of the track. That looks mechanical. Yeah, he's, he's certainly off. not hurt. I guess he's pulling the bike out of the way. Series in a moto in which he was down at the beginning of the race. What has happened to Tomac? Uh, with the left hand, but it doesn't matter. Cordless, yeah. Yeah, though, the rear wheel's still not... We'll talk about strong. Third place to Tomac uh, off the side. Looks like he recovered pretty quickly, but that was a critical position. Tomac, yeah, it's theoretically a seventh motocross event that he's entered, so not a ton of time, of course, but as you guys were alluding to, sort of caught between a rock and a hard place, but you can't make drastic changes. Oh, oh. big mistake. Muscan lost traction with the back end. Lost third and fourth. Muscan and Baggett. And then the leaders, of course, you've got Roxon of the Honda HRC machine and the Monster Cali of Tomac right behind him. Beautiful Tomac got right back on him, so that worked out well for Eli Ryan. Here he comes. Yeah, search and line choice. Never want to follow the guy. I was, I was a little bit just going to get stuck into a guy's pace. All right, here we come toward the finish line jump, and it is wheel to wheel. We've been talking about it all year, the battles between Ryan. now. Yeah, it kind of looked like maybe Ken is just trying to pick it up a little bit. Maybe he's going to try to take advantage. Big runner on the outside. 
Wow, that yeah. lapper really got the way. Oh, that's going to make all the difference. And Tobin. But of course. Yeah, and he did ride pretty patiently, too. He yeah. did ride at the ship, getting the points lead back. Eli Tomac wins the first moto here at Millville. Going for it, making it hard for Eli. And he's searching. I mean, he's definitely trying different lines and everything. And, and Can Tomac hold the inside all the way down this thing? Baggett's going to make it a run around the outside. Nice move by Eli. So the last five minutes or so, it's worked out about even. Yeah. Tomac hasn't been able to keep closing. Okay, let's see what happens Ooh. uphill. He's got to run. Woo! What a drive oh. by Tomac. Head into the triple. Can't shut that door. And he does. That was close. I thought Tomac had it there halfway up the hill. But yeah. he, he just forgot about the inside. Just said, make the turn. And lap traffic one just ahead. About three seconds. It's Marvin Muscan. Now, this is the battle for this individual Moto win. Championship points with each position. Well, Marvin actually got them that last lap around. He was in the 290. Run out. He wants this. Right Roxon doing everything he can. Yeah, to the inside. Oh, he might have it. He's actually able to steal Roxon off of the corner. He was able to go from right to left one lap ago, and he's going to do it again. Oh, side yeah. by side in the corner. Is he going to be able to do it down the hill? It's been, geez, probably 18 or 19 minutes to finally make this pass materialize. Eli Tomac is up to second. Two and a half laps to go. What a battle. Oh, you can tell. Jump at the breaking back. has got a killer drive. Look at this. Look at this. He's wow. got the lead already. Unbelievable. Struck instantly. Huge points. And then a bad second moto. Also with a couple of crashes at our last event. Led to him handing over the points lead. With a down weekend at Redbud, he responds with a big 1-1 at Millville. Eli Tomac. Tomac gets buried off the start, and again, the number 19 of Justin Vogel leads them in and out of the first turn. Pulled off right there. Oh, and these guys have been battling basically their whole lives to the amateur ranks, 250 class, 450. Oh, so close. Bosch is so good about that. Tomac leaping down to the inside. Power moves, scrubbed that jump, got to the inside, left the braking. Nothing Bosch could do. <laughs> that was... Yep, front just does not get into that inside right. He wanted a square. This hill. He's got the inside line, too. Easy of a pass, considering wow. you're trying to get around Justin Barsha. Nothing he could do there. Third and a first. So the two title contenders about to do battle here. They have hooked up in a battle for the number two position. You saw Roxon just ahead. He would lose the overall. Yep. He would go 3-1 to Tomax. 1-2. Muscan's got to try to beat him back to the inside of his corner. He did. It's but Tomax relentless. Around. He's got oh. it! Huge leap! Oh. Muscan grabs a handful of throttle and gets back in front of him. So he tries what again! A corner from Tomac! Side by side! Muscan is going to take him high once the power hill. you got to get the power to the ground. Get your weight back. you got to drive. See, they're trying to work. Get that, get that wheel on the ground. You're driving forward, not in the air. Now, oh. Muscan! Outside, and Tomac just made it happen. I was about to compliment Tomac is now to the rear wheel of Roxton. And you got Muskin lurking right there. If these guys get in a little, trying to get Lapis out of the way, let them sell it. Big jump down the hill. Tomac's got a line of the inside. Rocks and rockets out of the corner. Holds him in vain. Another shot of the inside. Away a little bit as they push each other. I think Marvin made a little mistake okay. coming out of that chicane section there. Probably sensing the crowd getting excited. The huge crowd is on these, on these hills under the trees. Big crowd on hand. That's why you hear that roar. Pulled away a bit from Muskan. Big charge to the whip to Eli. He's on the inside. What a launch. He's got the lead. Angle, if they've got it or not, but he did. Oh, look what? at that. That was Lit awesome. that corner up. Here it is. Checkered flag. 1-1 one, one sweep in dramatic oh. fashion for Eli Tomac. And then inside works for Baggett. Let's see if he can carry enough corner speed to hold it. And trying to keep him calm. Get the goggles on. Keep the mud out. Keep the moisture out. And off he goes. Right. Like a NASCAR pit stop. I think a stack of seven or eight. Oh, is that the lady that he's passing right there? It looked like it, I think but so. it's soaked up. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Still second, and he's caught the leader. And the leader, I've got to imagine, his vision problem. Oh, yeah. And you can see he's not attacking the track. And watch, here it comes. Wow. So the same thing has happened to both riders. And Tomac takes the lead here at Unadilla. You're not supposed to be able to come through traffic in the mud. He's done it. Cavity. Whether it be dry or muddy, Eli Tomac's a winner in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Mark is in the water. Eli Tomac in the second half of the final race of the day here at Butts Creek has found another one of what he calls the hero ride. And now we have a fight between the two title contenders for second and Tomac blast past him around the outside. I saw that a few laps ago when he just had this look, the way he was riding. 
Yes. That, I mean, and, and for Marvin... win so many times, you know he wants this one badly. But Tomac is right there. Another yes. level. And he does. He seals he, it off. Tomac is just... He's feisty right now. And We've seen the Ken Roxon that's been passed by Tomac and sort of, you know, maybe accepted it or just figured he couldn't run at that point. Some of the performances he's put in this year, not the amount of race wins, several riders, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, with phenomenal riding. And he's done it again to win here at Bud's Creek. Last year made all 17 starts. Best finish was a ninth. Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake. Tomac has made the move on Anderson. Boom! Smith got Check him, him as well. Defensively, there's Eli Tomac trying to make a charge by him. Look at Malcolm. The Kawasaki into that sand section. He gets right on the back of Stewart. Oh, now oh, he gets way outside. Is. Scrubs it and then just lays on the throttle, jumps one more. How far in he goes, and he's got Freezy. And the crowd here at Sam Boyd is responding. You're that much closer to a million bucks. And Chad Reed now. And Tomac is right there. Get by Reed. You hear Jesse go. Jesse and you too would be a millionaire here tonight. He is really impressing me right now. He just looks fantastic. He's got 200 more cc's under him than what he. Tomac's only about four tenths of a second quicker. And I don't know if it's going to be enough, Ralph. What about the Joker lane, don't forget the gentleman you see on the right side of the screen. If Eli Tomac wins the Tomac giving it everything he's got. He wants to add his name to Marvin Muskan and Ryan Villapoto at the Monster Energy Cup. He launches it into the sand. Oh he launches it for all. It's going to be the last he looks section. over the corner. That's the greatest team move in the history of Supercross. Millionaire Eli Tomac, boy, that's going to be tremendous momentum for him. What a great start for Roxon! 15 minutes in one lap, down goes Roxon right out of the lead, and he hands it to Tomac. Barsha runs in third. What a start! I cannot believe Ken Roxon standing up a lot he's electing to stand up to these mud con muddy conditions you saw him in the whoop section a little earlier here's alex ray oh and ray goes down tomac has got to get around him here it comes checkered flag for eli tomac Paget with a great stony first paget has got tomac on his tail Feet. His parents' house about 5,000 feet. That's where he trains when he's in Colorado. And I have to do training for Tomac. Oh, oh back and blasts him with the sand. And the KTM and Kawasaki riders counter punching. Eli Tomac on his way to the checkers. He will win the Daytona Supercross. Until says Tomac. He's out up a little bit here tonight. Inside again. Coming to the finish line, Eli Tomac will win the first Monster Energy Supercross race and giving chase to the race leader and Bogle, a heat race winner on the 19. Tomac gets around Ryan Brees. He's headed to the front. But can he hang on for Tomac? The Colorado made him. Show the hometown fans he's ready to go tonight. He's going to try to get up the inside of his oh, teammate yes. right there. Oh, that was a pretty aggressive pass. Eli is on the move right now. He's three seconds behind. Could he get win number five here tonight? Move. 
Hoffman cuts the gap between him and 2019. He will move within one of the legendary Bob Hurricane Hannah. That is his home race September. What he needed to do here tonight. Tomac beats West in the corner to get the whole shot. The lead, he's extended it to 6.1 over Marvin Muskan, the Monster Energy Kawasaki ride. Why can't he do this every single week? And it's so much fun, I mean, for me to watch, you know, doing tonight and bring it for 17 rounds. The guy would be in touch him. He really would. And uh, he's got the best well rounded. It's a game of averages. Eli Tomac wins. Kenny gets edged by Blake Baggett in the number four. Very aggressive to try to hold off Anderson, but it is passed to Anderson as well. So just like that, Marvin Muskan has gone from fourth to third. He almost ran into Tomac. Oh, that puts him to the outside. Is this going to work? Or will this give Tomac the opportunity? It does. So he left the door open. Eli saw the opportunity, took the line away at the exit. Can he get Roxon? I can cannot Marvin believe respond. that Tomac has suddenly found himself in position. Again, and now his old rival, Ken Roxon, to try to take the lead. Oh. He's down the inside. Tomac's got it. Hangtown quickly trying to make it two in a row and call off any sort of alarm as to him having the capabilities to win three titles in a row here. In our first race, couple riders off track. Bogle of the 19. Muskan made the most of that outside starting spot. He, yes, yes he, he does. Bogle's going to try to get it back, though. Yeah, you can see how they had to tip throw, tip throw along. Eli Tomac has oh. up the pace in the second half of this race, and he leaps by to take the lead. Muskan trying to fight back. Can't oh. make it happen. Osborne and Anderson are. They're going to give him a run, as they did early today. But in the end, Eli Tomac has won again. Osborne gets the shot by Roxon. Let's see if he can squeeze him off. No, Roxon comes back. A pair of Cooper Webb, and Webb's going to get the Motorsport.com whole shot. But Roxon works the enemy the outside in this corner. Let's see if he can beat Webb to the exit. This uh, downhill might be the most treacherous part, same corner that he used to get Muscan. Can Webb fend him off? Webb will be on the inside of the top of the hill. Side again. Cooper does not want to give this up. Eli over jumps that jump. And once again, able to get back to the at a very, very high level. This is how you dissect a motocross track. Rocks in China. Stop Tomac. Tomac, a big charge down the inside. Tomac anticipated that. Now watch this. This uphill is super gnarly. Watch how they do it. Slightly different at times, but very effective. With some riders crashing in front of him, the goggles broke. They got it fixed. He finished fifth. He rebounds and wins the second moto here in his home skates down at Redbud. Uh, Tomac got a good jump, but he was a good call. Yeah, Bogle in the number 19. So two KTMs battling. Bogle had it. Webb took it away. Bogle gets it back. As you mentioned, Eli Tomac, a good start. If you keep Webb, you've got to be happy. Look at this. Just that KTM has got some great straight line speed. Finds that line. He's got the inside coming in the corner. Going to be a battle through the sand rollers. Webb's going to have to try to use the outside to get a drive. Right now, Tomac has the edge. Tomac, he used this line to make the move on Cooper Webb to take the uh, second place spot and now he gets the lead from Bogle so two laps two passes in the same spot Eli Tomac back on top in Lucas Oil pro motocross he wins wow so the number seven not even going to be off the line in this one and Joey Zavacci we mentioned how quick he was in qualifying we don't see passes here very often but he's going to take an opportunity and gets it well you know what at the end of the day it canceled it, it each other out they both sort of got Held up briefly, and then, oh, oh! Tomac inside, oh. and he goes down! The trees, we've seen this, it is tough to pass, but because you can switch up your line, you can make it happen in here. Tomac goes to the outside, which he has to do. Their lines will come together. Oh, Tomac's got it! They almost connect! Oh. Actually, it sends Roxon off the traffic, and despite the bad start, he is going to be the Moto winner here at Washougal. Another good start for Savacci in the 17. They know each other so well. Whoa. Tomac laying it in deep. Scrubbing this jump together. Tomac looking for room where there isn't any. And he managed Watch Tomac's this. line. Now Tomac's going to try the outside here. Who's going to win the battle out of the corner? Tomac's got it. Muskan did everything he could, but it wasn't enough. He's going to go 1-1.
in impressive, dominating fashion here. On, on the bike, it was like perfection other than the start. So, I mean, the second moto there, you know, there was, it was pretty much mistake free and I was just feeling so good. Like when everything's just in the right spot, right time, right place. Gates down. Great jump from Tomac on the inside. Let's see if he can sneak through. I think it's Bogle going to throttle, which he often is, but he also uses the clutch to control that. Their lines almost come together. Wow, nice move. I didn't think Tomac had room. <laughs> he threaded the needle. Breaks. It could have sent Tomac into the little lake there off the track, but uh, he did work at the farm. He's back. Eli Tomac, a dominant performance. In Good start for Tomac, but he's going to get pitched off from the inside. It's going to be Os and now Tomac to the lead. Wow, that did uh, did not help Marv there, but uh, Osborne did not do that intentionally. He will not rip the track as deep as they normally do. See right there, pretty hard packed blue motocross bike, and he's going to prove it again because for the third year in a row, Eli Tomac is a Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. that inside rut otherwise it would have made contact great drive out of that corner for Roxon. so teammate Savachi's got the line out of the corner to hold Tomac off Tomac big charge down the inside Savachi able to hold him off at least for the moment Tomac at the number one does he have the drive in the sand yes he interesting does. as Tomac ventures out tries to get the drive there's only a little bit of room he's, he's able it. to stick yeah he's got it the Kawasaki right. champion he's gonna end the season on top with a moto and overall win Eli Tomac takes the Ironman National, the finale. Here we go. Look at that run. Look at that run from Eli Tomac for the lead. He's got it. Just. What a pass. Just carrying so much speed. You better watch out. But you're Ken Roxon, this is still in a good, you're a good position to be in from a point situation. This guy is just on a rail. I love watching Eli when he's on these type of rides. He's riding so. Check it, flag is out, and Eli Tomac says, "How about me?" Tirola goes right after his teammate. He goes back to the number two slot. Uh, this is the battle we want. All the four guys up front should be tough in this tight section where they're at right now. Let's see, some guys going inside, some guys going outside. Maybe it's right here. Ooh, how about right there? It is seven. And look at the fight. on tonight. You know, it's going to be a... And the track's going to come apart more and more as we, as we were still got nine minutes. Oh, problems for Tomac! He's off course! And Roxon's back in the lead! Good. No issues. Oh, oh, he loses the front right there. Yeah, oh, he will yeah. just a little bit, but I'm heating up a little bit. As Webb has caught Adam C. and Saru. Here comes Eli! Aggressive, making it happen. Hey. What does that say about the mental toughness of Eli Tomac here today? What? Chasing career victory number 29 in his second of 2020. He's got to cross him up. Oh! Chasing from third, and Malcolm Stewart with a great start, all in white, running in fourth. Back in the same position as he was last weekend, the San Diego, can he take it to the finish line? This is going to be fun to walk. Matt needs to make the pass right here. And he does so, Ricky, just like you called. And here comes Malcolm Stewart alongside of his teammate. Daniel was talking. That pass will put the former Daytona winner up into 10th. And look at this battle oh! between the two. Kawasaki back to right to see Cerullo, but couldn't get it done in the sand turn. See Cerullo counters again. Let's see if that outside line works for Tomac. It does. He just settle in here. Follow Eli. See where Eli's gaining all that speed on him. Try to stay with him. Get you another podium finish. Build those blocks like you've been doing all season long here in your rookie season. You can see he's learning. This is going to be interesting. Over that red plate and the points lead as we will head to Arlington, Texas, and a triple crown race in the final time. He'll win number three in Tampa for 2020. 
Malcolm Stewart with a good start as well. Here's where Tomac's gonna get it. Moving it on the start by the number three. Getting that early lead, and these boys better get after it, because if they don't, he is gonna check out. And starting off the way it did, what was that, Detroit? Meanwhile, Eli Tomac will get the win in race two. Tomac buried in the pack at the start here. Ford has the best racers in the world come in front of this pack grandstand for the battle now for Ford. Barsha, Webb, Tomac. He's got Barsha. And Webb is on the move. Here he comes. Lots of speed went down. Yeah, he leaned the bike over just a little bit too much. And the side knobbies of the tire grabbed the rut and over. Mark on the side of that helmet from where it looked like he rubbed it on the dirt here at Daytona. And just right now, they're both in podium positions as they run second and third. And they're fighting for a win here at the 50th. Sending it into that sand or into that left hand corner. Oh! Bobbled by Webb! He landed with too much weight on the front. Knowing that he's got to cover the insides. The problem, though, is Eli Tomac has some of the lines that he's using the outside, too. So he might try to use that as a setup. Oh, and a bobble by Tomac, the long side. He's got him. Tomac wins here and gets his fourth Daytona Supercross victory. Nobody will be surprised. That was pretty much what everybody expected. Lap times and... I just don't think that Eli Tomac's going to be the night here. Sides. And he will join Ryan Villapoto and Jeff Stanton. He's the other four-time winners. Into the sand section. It's easy to get crossed up in the ruts. See? Oh, Eli hits it perfectly. Oh, he messes up. Cuts up the inside, get a good drive out. Ken's going to make it a run all the way to the checker. But the 50th Daytona Supercross goes to the now four-time winner here. Anderson. Much respect between those two. Taking that win and moves into the rarefied air of four-time winners here. Oxen's right there close by. He's not too many guys behind the number three and the number one of Cooper Webb right there on your screen. Oh, look at Cooper Webb. He's going to... Try to get by him. He's not going to cut Eli Tomac any slack. And Cooper Webb finish in between him and Eli because that's what, here goes the pass by Eli. Yep, right inside. Cooper tries to counter kick. Man, this track is really starting to get hard packed. Less than 13. Like he says, he's starting to find his flow, Ralph. And he is closed in. On the race leader, the number four. Is Eli going to not do, you know, is he going to do what he's always done in the past and kind of give away a race? Oh, he's going to try to make the pass of the inside. He likes this spot right here, and he makes it work as Tomac gets around Baggett and doing exactly what he wanted to do. Get to the lead. Get to the checkered flag first. And As the number three of Eli Tomac. Osborne led 20 laps on Wednesday, didn't get the win. Before Tomac catches up to him. Oh, look Big at he triples. There. That triple could make the difference. It will. Cooper oh. will. Oh, Tomac gets inside Osborne, too. Yeah, Tomac took advantage. Every way through those two corners. And Webb is going to have to now find the weakness in Tomac. Goes a little bit too far inside. Doesn't get a good run into the whoops. Eli Tomac sees the opportunity. Something here. That's the only. Oh, there's a move through the whoops. Cooper's quicker. Then he tries to get inside with Roxon right there. And he comes. To just stay right behind Cooper Webb. Kind of like he was doing at the beginning of the race. Let the, ra let the pass come to him if he needs to here. So kudos to the team. Jason Anderson, by the way, is some 20 oh. seconds back behind these two. Tomac goes for the lead. He's uh -oh. got it. Bar to bar through this rhythm lane. Oh, Here's boy. Cooper on the inside. Oh, not able to get him yet. Spark to make one oh. final push. 30 seconds and a lap to go. Oh, boy. Eli's going to have to be. He's going to have to. There's Osborne just in front of him as they hit the whoops again. Cooper charging hard. Interesting, man. It's coming down to the wire. Oh, there Cooper's he there looking inside. Couldn't do it. Pulled away. Oh, oh, here he That's goes. Rock's in there. And here comes Cooper again. 
Will Roxon get in the way of this? Like it moved out of the way last time. Oh. Does so again. I Cooper's right there. Look at inside. Oh. He was to Eli Tomac. Oh, he gets hung up here by the 34. Oh, that's going to cost him Tyler Bowers. Tomac, here he comes. Tomac's going to pull it off in the biggest win of the year so far for Eli Tomac. Tomac, you got to keep an eye on Cooper Webb. Make sure that Cooper Webb doesn't try to pull a fast one on you. Play a little skew and get caught up in their unfortunate circumstance, and it bring you down at the same time. His career, this would be the thing that would certainly lock up that first ballot Hall of Fame induction for Eli Tomac. 30 main event wins. Think about what he's done in his career. All those wins, no title. He's going to fix that right now. But how about this stat? This is a testament to the sport of scenes afterwards. He would be the first rider in history to win the title as a father on Father's Day. What a what a big feat for him in the family. The industry questioned it. Eli has answered the 2020 Monster Energy AMA Supercross. And if I am world... With Bosch, I am. He's right there. He's looking to make the pass on Tomac. Really upset Tomac's day because he's going to lose more points to Osborne. I mean, they're all right there. Anything can happen. But Adam Enignap, the lap rider, that's going to slow Osborne, and it allows Tomac to get by. Barsh has passed him as well, and Barsh is going to get a boat. Is he? They're going to be side by side. Tomac will have the inside. The yellow flag, that's for Anstey. Oh, Barsha, who is certainly not afraid to stick the wheel in there. Tomac definitely is pushing. Uh, we saw him uh, on the corner before going up to Godzilla. His front wheel broke through the rut. Ways than one. He's trying to take the lead late in this moto. He's on the inside. He's got his teammate seen to roll. Up. Series that only pays 50 points maximum per weekend. <laughs> but now he's going for the win. And Justin Barsha following him through. Barsha oh, just rolls through the corner. And then the Woo! Typical Bam Bam style. Keeps it low of the jump. He doesn't want. Oh, oh! he plays Ryder at the top of the screen, going for third. What great racing today. He's just going to give it everything he has to get it done here. I mean, he is loose. <laughs> That's Bosch's style. That's what you know. He's cunning to be alarmed about, but I would say just keep an eye on it. Maybe if it holds it holds him up, you know, beating Tomac, it gives Bosch an opportunity just to go to the outside, try something different. The One to go. This would be massive for Eli Tomac to win the overall. And Barsha, of course, never going to give up. He's going to try and force uh, Tomac into a mistake. Where's Barsha? There Barsha's still there. Ooh, there's Barsha's really good in these next this next corner. He chances a lapper. That's going to hold Tomac up. This about as close as Barsha has been with a half a lap to go. It's going to have to be a problem. The problem is Barsha, who will not go away. One of those. Bikes just really use it close, but he's not gonna run out of time. Oh, he's using the inside to the sand rollers. One turn to go. He is, and he's back on top. Big win for Eli Tomac here at Ironman. Really interesting. And hey, there's been uh oh, cheering there, loving this, and looking at Anstey. Doesn't want to give it up, triples up the hill. Hey, he goes Tomac, three-time champ. Fourth. <laughs> well, a lot happening on yeah. that opening lap. Catch our breath real quick, but this is great to see what a performance. They battled for this title the last couple of years. Moose scan of the 25. Tomac around the outside. Quick pass. Wow. Boss carried so much speed up the hill. Almost got Anstey. Might have Anstey. Got Anstey. Woo! Two passes and two. To, to think about long shadows across the track. We are on the side of a mountain. We don't normally race this late in the season at the tail end of this moto. But I think the spoiler is going to come from Eli Tomac. What's he going to do? Is he going to blow by these He guys? is from Colorado, so he's got a little extra fuel in the tank, proverbially, as he tries to close down. And it is early, only eight minutes into a 30-minute and two-lap race here in Colorado. Tomac is getting off. The lap times show that they're, you could throw a blanket over them, all three of them half a second apart. Well, at least so far. But... Those issues. And one of the ways you could do it is getting around Osborne. Oh, he thought about it. He went for it, but he had a back downhill. Osborne for the moment has it. There's Tomac again. Tomac right there. Yeah, but he's on the outside of this corner. He's wow, you've not seen many passes on the outside of that corner, but Tomac got it done. Uh, and he shuts the door at the exit, makes sure. Yeah, you, it's basically been one good weekend for one, one bad weekend for the other, and vice versa. 
It's one of the first times we've seen the battle in this time. Is uh, basically uh, finding his old form, and then on the flip side, they want. Battle for the lead. It's on. Two Kawasaki's. Tomac on the outside. Florida. We saw that. And Cincerello's been so strong all day. And he fights back right there. I thought he had an opening. But he wants maximum points. He wants to win both motos to try to close down on Osborne in the series heading into next weekend. And that's what it took. But wow, Eli Tomac. I was curious if he was going to have that momentum roll from last week. It doesn't matter how he did it. The bottom line is he did do it. Eli Tomac back on top, taking the win here at Thunder Valley. Points of concern, keeping this uh, championship alive. But now you got some Hondas lining up. If Osborne rides a little conservative, he's away. Gets Oliver Buscan. Then he makes a mistake. Buscan pulls back away. And now we have Tomac on the scene. Good right now. Kind of guy who gets stronger as the moto goes on so that can be bad news for the riders in front of him chase sexton zach osborne marvin buscan it's a little jealousy but it's <laughs> it's you know i love watching i really appreciate seeing uh talent at work out there and osborne doesn't have rear view mirrors right now he does not oh want gosh. to see what's happening or what's coming oh, you can tell muscan, serious. muscan's frustrated he's trying to get those spots back so, it's come on rival for him tomac on the attack yeah that unfortunately that that bend I, you know, I can't say I'm surprised at all as Tomek barrels to the outside. Oh, Lapras having a look. Side. There's not going to be much room. With Craig. Oh, not too far back as well. A little mistake from Sexton. Tomek almost had it. Yeah, Tomek squares the inside. He's going to do a sex. Osborne because <laughs> there's just less to get in the way, I guess. Wait a minute. Eli Tomek has cut. See, it's really And a lot of people will tell you, I think it's true. The leader usually gets, generally speaking, the worst end of the stick because he just got... Right. Tomac digging deep. These, these guys are going so fast. Teammates. Adam C. and Cerullo had about five seconds on everyone, but once Eli Tomac gets going, he's hard to stop. And I don't know how much longer Adam can hold on because Tomac is right there. Oh, look how good he is through there. Tomac C. made a few adjustments as the tracks change. Tomac's right there. Oh, a little mistake from Adam. He's been able to make a couple of adjustments. I think AC not following. Here it is. Tomac around the outside. It's put together. We'll put to oh. rest any question about team tactics today. To the Cal of fans get excited. Look at that. To the outside. He's got the inside in the next corner, but Cincerello so Whoa. good at staying low. Tomac definitely has the pace. Here it is. It's going to be another inside for Tomac. See Cirillo blocks it again. Tomac back for second. Now he is six and a half seconds behind. Tomac is on fire. This is what he likes. When it gets Florida, it's all over. Seen Cerullo for the lead here. Almost got him on the inside. Oh, he tried to make it work. This is where he's found. Roller section. Down the inside. Tomac's got a wheel on him. Almost punches his teammate off the track. Side by side. Inside. Cincerello's got to stay low and get the wood power to the ground. Because watch Eli. He's going to try and make it happen. Oh, and Tomac again chops the front end off. Who they catch, where, and when. Because we got guys having a great battle of their own. So... <laughs> They're not going to want to side of the racetrack. Tomac going to go the long way around here. Uh oh. These lines converge, and Tomac finally has the bleed. Just gave that outside uh, to Tomac, and you know that if he gets that opening, he'll absolutely annihilate team for Osborne going into the final moto. I mean, it really, really would come down to this. If Osborne doesn't finish moto two, as the season has gone on, what team tactics? Eli Tomac wins. Austin Bloss out the middle of the 23. Marvin Muscan's there. Tomac, a terrific start on the one. Guys are so, uh, at the similar speed. All these guys have stepped up their game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Lee, we were talking about it earlier. For one of the breaks. If, if, if. Into the works. It was not a great result on Saturday night. It is tonight on Tuesday. The champ win. Tomac's got a nice inside line. Tomac is there. He gets the lead. And he put him all the way to the outside. And riders like Jeff Stanton and Ryan Villapoto and our very own Art. Now, Eli Tomac is a five-time winner. A five-time winner.
and draws level with Ricky. Cooper Webb on the two on the Red Bull KTM. Here comes the Monster Energy Factory Kawasaki. Tomac won in Daytona, and when people saw the early sketches of this track, they said this could be Tomac Town as Speedways in the 2021 season. And you just got to go big picture here if you're Cooper Webb. It'd be so sweet to say I got my first 450 win when I held off the reigning series champion. But Tomac is... Race, do not waver. Focus ahead. Do not race behind you. For event of Monster Energy. Oh, Clayson across. messes him up. Uh-oh. Chase oh. Dexter. Look out! jump from Tomac to take the lead listen to the crowd tried to get out of the way went to the right hand side of the track and that is exactly where Chase Sexton was going at the office for Cooper but this is trying to keep the championship hopes alive for the factory Kawasaki Tomac's gonna do it again look at that spectacular style Eli Tomac wins at Atlanta Motor Speedway What a ride, Eli Tomac. Shot, I thought, but now we have Eric Plessing out in the lead. Yep, and Tomac on the number three is right there as well. Actually tightening up from the back oh. of the group. Look at Eli Tomac, what a drive out of that corner, battling Plessinger. I don't know if Plessinger missed a gear or something. I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I feel like Eli looks a little bit different than I've seen the first five motors, and I think that's a good thing. A battle, the youngster that everyone knew could do well, Adam Cincerello. The guy who's won this series three times. These two Kawasaki riders have done. We have seen Ferrandez and Roxon absolutely sending it. And so that, that battle yeah. hold each other a little bit. Look at Eli over the top of that crest there. That was impressive. And, and flying into that corner. Huge charge side by side with his teammate Adam Cianciarulo for the lead here at High Point. Oh, Cianciarulo going to fight back around the outside, and he does. They almost come together. There was contact there. Their lines came together. Cianciarulo blitzing that back part of the track, launched all the way over that one crest jump so fast. It appears to be right now. Look at this. He's flying. That's the Eli Tomac that you expect to see in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Rear. Moto win for Tomac. There it is, Eli Tomac, first Moto win of 2021. I feel like Ferrandez is fi finding his groove again. The gap is coming down. It's true. Last lap around, Ferrandez 208.6, Plessinger 209.8, Tomac 209.6. Look at Ferrandez, how good he is getting the power to the ground. I mean, AP, AP's been so strong. I mean, this is his rookie season, and so uh, I mean. Not a lot of guys really come in and do this, and the fact that he's doing it, it's you know exceeding the expectation. You won it in your rookie year on a 450, but then you've told me <laughs> it wasn't as easy as it looked from the outside to pull that off. So uh, he is coming after Eli Tomac with a lap to go. He's cut it from 3.3 to one and a half. Eli Tomac on the last lap of a moto, like I said, he's one of the fittest riders we've ever seen in this series. But Ferranis is just an animal. Oh. Eli saw the back just dance around a little bit, got a little sideways, but he brought it back real quick. Yeah, he is hustling. Barsha ahead of Webb, and then Sabachi has moved into 10th around Max Anstey. Sabachi on the Rocky Mountain ATV and the racetrack left. Yeah, he needed about five to ten bike lengths to have a shot into this section, unless Tomac makes a mistake. That's kind of hard. Absolutely. Going to leave these guys scratching their heads. What do they got to do to hold him off late in these races? Not enough. Eli Tomac is going to win the second moto for the second week in a row in Lucas Oil Pro Moto. And there is Dylan Ferrandez. And right behind Ferrandez, you got Eli Tomac. And Tomac's down to the inside of the number three. Nasty of the tracks get the better he seems to do. And right now, he looks really good at the moment. Oh, almost comes together with Ferrandez. He, he's going to run that outside. Eli is all over this racetrack trying to get around Ferrandez. Will he cross him up? No, he ran out of room. I just came to a standstill in the middle of the turn. Tomac continues attacking. Ferrandis, he's going to go way down to the inside. Looks like Ferrandis was able to get around Craig. Tomac is going to have to follow him. Series leader. Tomac to the inside on Craig. He's got one. He's going to have a good sweeping line in this turn. And oh. Tomac right around Muskan as well. Mark tries to run it back in on him. Tomac has clawed his way back to Ferrandis. So they made moves on a couple of riders, Craig and Muskan. But it's still early days. These guys are still feeling relatively fresh, but 
Oh, landed in that soft spot right there. Right he, there. He's ready to pounce. And seeing Cirillo has caught web. So you've got second, third, fourth, fifth. Moment for Aaron Plessinger after all of those podium finishes. Can you give us an idea of what you felt out there on the track that made you pull in? Yeah. Start overheating. One thing I have learned with these Monday four strokes, they're very reliable. Oh, yeah, once again, he lands. Spot, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tons of steam coming out. Okay. So what I was getting at is I've learned with these modern four strokes. When you see steam, it's okay. Danger it, zone that we no, about. no, the wrong danger zone. Meanwhile, Ferrandez is making passes anyway. He goes around Cooper Webb. It's happening. Remember, his teammates bike just quit. Tomac around Webb. Major drama here in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Your series leader, Dylan Ferrandez, making passes. That's to the good. Yeah, I said it at break, but coolant coming out is not the end of the world. It's when it runs out of coolant. We're seeing that steam. Oh! Ferrandez almost down. And Tomac, who's been putting serious pressure on him, goes by. Coolant, and that's when the engine's going to start melting. Yeah, and we saw our first look at the steam coming out 10 minutes into the... You know, dirt collecting in the radiator, so yeah. not enough cool air. Riding the clutch hard, riding hard, all that together can do that. Ferrandez is in fourth, seeing Cirillo third. Tomac has gotten around his teammate up to second. But, but uh -oh. guess what? I was about to say, Eli Tomac has put in a huge charge. I didn't expect him to get there that quickly. But Eli Tomac, just when you question him, he just brings it right back. And one, and just like that, what was a seven second lead for Roxon is gone. Yeah, it's, it's long gone. <laughs> and so is Tomac. Eli. That's if Ferrandez's bike continues to run. Meanwhile, Tomac <laughs> on the move. 218 the last lap. Four seconds quicker than everyone. Eli Tomac looking at the moto victory. It would be three in a row in the second moto. That uh, gaining confidence, you know, and when you have that, it's just, uh, it's a it's a huge thing. And Jeff, Jeff can... Time on Ferrandez. Can he use it to get the lead? It's on the inside, not close enough. Looking for running room on Ferrandez. Come back around the outside again. Watch this outside line out like they were in Moto One. And Ferrandez comes from the inside out, kind of makes a nice arc around bowler to carry the momentum. But Woo! Tomac, a big over jump, just sending it. This straight away on Ferrandez. Let's see if he can uh, make the pass. He's finally got it. Ferrandez is like Moto Two. He's got the job done. And you know what he wants now? The lead from Webb. Look at the dirt flying off the back. Out into that takeoff. And they drag the foot pegs through those ruts. Obviously, he takes a lot of pressure off. Tomac will focus back on the battle for the lead because Tomac wants it. Jump at the top of the hill. Whoa, oh, that's Webb. Close. Here's the thing about Webb. He is so crafty. And, it, look, look, they're look they both want that the outside. outside. They, they both they, want it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple. The riders are going all the way outside, finding the smooth line, and, and it's working for him. Oh, and, that's oh. close, too. Lap. Okay, he's been trying this outside right here. Oh. And left, right exchange. Tomac comes in hot around the outside to set up for the inside here. Can he complete the pass? He's got it. But he said after the race last week, he has a lot of motivation to try to get a win. He's Eli Tomac is back. He wins the overall here at Ironman Raceway. Well, he mentioned on the podium that even though he was second, that he felt that goes into. This is what I was using the Telestrator earlier, those big hooks in it. See the bike kick back? Still, though. Houston Supercross in 2018. He got hurt in Anaheim, won the opener, wasn't able to go in Houston, and that is it. He's made every other race for the Red Bull KTM team. Oh, Tomac, big power move from the outside to the inside, wow. and wheelies by. What a move. Whatever it may be, how many times have we seen Ken Roxon and Eli Tomac battle? It has to be one of the longest running Your volume of times that we have seen Tomac and Roxon battle. Tomac going to get the better of it this time. He's got the pass. That far behind, maybe five seconds, eight seconds, and take a look at the lap times there. The moto where you know Tomac, he's starting to feel it. 20 minutes left, it's hot, yes, but he definitely has a great flow, great speed. Tomac to close up on him. Ferrandez, all he's thinking about is keeping Roxon in his rearview mirror, and if he does that, he's going to be champion. Purcell crashes with the championship plate like in his hands, Absolutely. essentially and hands the title over to uh, Trey Kennard. What? Holding the points lead, the potential to wrap up the title, and Eli Tomac all over him. But, but uh, Eli but was asked, when can you say where you're riding next year? And he said, uh, October 1st. Uh, How hard will Ferrandez fight with the title in balance? And Ferrandez looks over and Tomac takes the lead.
and it's just over like that. Amazing accomplishment, 18 minutes plus two laps to go. And when you're out there, you're in the zone, but you definitely know what's going on. But you 38 seconds. That's old school Tomac level gap. Yep. It up with similar performances here, yeah. You know, wheelie for his longtime mechanic, Brian Kranz, as he goes through the mechanics area. Parents, both world-class mountain bike racers on a hot, brutal, tough day. Eli Tomac is the winner here at Fox Raceway. Trying to take it away from Christian Craig. It's now a battle for second as Cooper Webb has taken the number one spot. Craig fighting back on Tomac. Stake. Can Tomac power down the inside? Oh, look how rough that line is. Makes Ooh. the pass. This is Eli Tomac's last ride with Monster Energy Kawasaki. Sir, Tomac has his lines, but Tomac has the advantage of getting to see what's happening. Tomac, he wants to end this series with three straight victories, going on top after a long run with Kawasaki. So these guys want it in the worst way. It's the outside here. Tomac has to hit the braking bumps on the inside, but it's a shorter Whoa, line. Side by side to the left to protect. And look at the fans here at Hangtown. They're waving the towels and the hats. They're Tomac's being treated this to downhill. amazing race. They know the pass could be coming, and there it is. Couple of bike links. Webb has got to put the pressure on. He's got to find a way to respond and not let Tomac get comfortable. Look at this battle. So Tomac went around the outside, grabbed the tear off, was slow in the corner, and Webb pulled right back to his rear tire. 36, 35th ish place. 40 riders in the moto. A couple were down in the first turn. Well, I mean, even at that, these points could get really. And Monster Energy, Kawas Monster Energy Kawasaki together is going to end in a moto win. Second moto at Hangtown goes to Tomac. Absolutely. And uh, I just I, I wanted to give everything I had, and, and we did that for moto two. Uh, very cool for us to finish, you know, the way we did. Yeah, like you said, last race for myself and uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki. But, uh, you know, you know, we finished on top. So thankful to have uh, Kranz, you know, on my bike uh, for the past uh, 11 years. That's his last race with us, too. So uh, definitely emotional, and uh, thank you guys for coming out. A lot of great memories, memories for Eli Tomac and Monster Energy Kawasaki.